What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Golden Dice podcast spoiler episode. I believe this is, what, our second one. Uh, last podcast, or a few podcasts ago, we decided to split these up as, uh, you know, two hours wasn't always the most fun to, to sit through. Um, I know you guys said you still enjoyed it, but we got a lot of good feedback of splitting up, them up. So we're going to do that, and this will probably be our second to last one at this point. I think there's like 18 or 20 cards left, and um, we pretty much got confirmation from Xander that we'll be done on the 10th because they'll have some spoilers this week, I'm sure, uh, on, like social media, probably some content creators, and then uh, us along with like you know, 25, 30 other content creators will be in Minnesota opening packs, and I'm sure we're bound to get everything um, at that yeah. point. Yeah, odds are. Yeah. Um, and he said, if not, he said that was the end of the spoiler season. So like if there's a legendary left or something and we just happen to not get that legendary, then maybe, you know, that gets posted that night or something they like sh- that. But anyway. they shouldn't spoil it. They should just like, if it doesn't get open, <laughs> they should just like, let it go until someone opens it. Well, they want everything on the, the TCG player before launch. So, yeah. um, but we've got a good amount to co- uh, cover. We are going from Bendu all the way to Palpatine. So we got a lot of good stuff and we're going to go ahead and jump in since we've got a good amount. We've got four of us. The gang's back together. It's been a minute. Yeah, no no technical difficulties on my part. Yeah, Scott was supposed to be there for the podcast. <laughs> this, la- the this, this laptop is like pretty much dead at this point, so I had to actually get my new computer up and running. Gotcha. Put you to work today then. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. I'll lead us off. We got Bendu the one in the middle. He's a six uh, six cost ground unit, double vig- uh, vigilance aspects. Uh, four attack, seven health. He's a force and creature, and he has sentinel. And he also says, on attack, the next non-heroism, non-villainy card you play, this phase costs two less. And he's rare. Uh, so he's our last vigilance double aspect card that we got. We had gotten the, the namesake event. And we had gotten uh, Protector, I believe it's called, the one that ga- gives Sentinel 1-1. One, one. So he's our last one. He definitely makes some plays really interesting. Uh, things like it binds all things or like a takedown for two. Um, he's weird in that he's six, so he competes with Obi-Wan if you're playing a hero deck. Although Villain's probably a little bit more happy to get him because they only had the Walker, I think it was, at six. And I don't know if they really care about the Walker as much. But... um. Yeah, I mean, he seems interesting. I th- think, like, Mono Blue just uh, eats aggro alive but kind of struggles into the rest. So, I mean, he's a good addition, I think, in both decks. Just a little weird with the Obi-Wan overlap at six cost Sentinels. But, yeah, I think he's good. Yeah, I like him, too. Uh, I like that it is on attack. You know, obviously, we try to attack early on, and then you get to use the two-cost uh difference on a card um which is nice uh but do you guys think that this, this is going to be like a situation where you're going to kind of ha- make sure your deck doesn't have a lot of hero heroism villainy cards because like i see like an issue coming in if you just take any other deck we have really right now it's going to have has villainy and hero and it might not get to use the ability if you you know have them in your hand i feel like i don't actively tech my deck to have a certain ratio yeah it's but like if you think about like every blue event they're all like neutral so essentially it's just like every yeah. blue event you play for two less but then maybe mm-hmm. all your um your units are are heroism so you're playing events for cheap and playing units on curve i guess i don't know yeah, yeah makes I mean, sense if you, if you can get it to the point where like the event that you're playing that round is is free and then you're you know just hitting on curve with a unit that's you know pretty big value and then obviously like future sets there's going to be more non heroism non villainy cards coming out so that'll expand the, the pool you just need like you know big drops in some other aspects that are not one or the other and then you've got some play with bendu and you immediately like ramp up yeah Although he is a little, it is a little slow to like, all right, attack, and then the next thing that you play is going to get two. So he does have to get the attack off, but he's four seven, so he's probably going to be able to get an attack off, unless he gets removed like the round that he gets dropped. Yeah, and it sticks around, right? So 
even if you yeah attack one, with him once he, he attacks it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah yeah but yeah there's Got better better stats than Obi. yes but Obi gives out those two xp tokens no matter yeah what. oh yeah <laughs> yeah there's there's no there's no galaxy where i think like you're playing uh bendu instead of obi-wan yeah like i think if you're running bendu it's you and you're running a heroism deck you also have obi-wan or you're playing villain and you don't have that option yeah but in that case you got another big big body six big drop booty. sentinel yep it's a thick Force. one i love that we have bendu set one i think that's pretty awesome yeah. pretty awesome like the art <laughs> yeah yeah the art's pretty cool yeah i uh i just think that mono blue is uh tough so um I don't know if I'm like super excited. This set, it's a cool card. Um, like you said, Ovi's better. Uh, and Villain, like you said, is better. Maybe. But Mono Blue's kind of a tough spot, so I haven't really had a chance to test this or anything. Your Kranich yeah. deck, though, dude. Mm -hmm. It's been waiting for you. Your Kranich deck. I know. It's I've been bullied out of playing that. <laughs> that I've, I've been, it's been called the uh, the the IG for me so <laughs> well, yeah i said what ig is to flock is what monocratic is to you <laughs> so i'm never touching it again basically <laughs> like is it a pet project or like you know great white whale i just like it i just think they're neat <laughs> <laughs> i i don't do the you know the 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 right competitive thing all the time. I just like, I just think, I just think they're neat. He just wants to make the game take as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, I want to play the grindiest <laughs> deck where nobody is fun and then I lose. <laughs> He's, I, I refuse everyone, to poop. Everyone has to, to suffer. <laughs> he wants to film a best of three against Flockton that's going to be an hour and 45 minutes. If I have to suffer, so do you. All right, Brian, you want to take the next one? Sure. The Force is with me. A four cost. Vigilance Heroism Event Force. I, I am one with the Force. The Force is with we. Choose a friendly unit and give two experience tokens to it. If you control a Force unit, also give a shield token to the chosen unit. You may attack with the chosen unit. Uh, this card is pretty good. It does a lot of things. Uh, and especially if you're using a, uh, your deck has a lot of Force units in it. I mean, uh, and, and blue is exactly that. So, I mean, this, this this is pretty good. I think it's a turret card, right? I mean, it definitely Both gets turret. played in turret. Yeah. I, yeah. It definitely goes in turret. I think it could be, like, a decent closer in, in like, Luke decks, too. Yeah, I was thinking I, Luke. I closed you out with it, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, I stole <laughs> your... your uh, you stole your my, my buffed A-Wing, so I just buffed the other one. Yeah, so then you forced it with me for the kill on whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a really good card because it is versatile. Like, if you don't have the Force unit out, you're still getting the two experience um, and attacking, so you can look at it as a, like, minimum value plus two attack card, which, I mean, for four, is, that's terrible, but it can be what wins you the game, in which case you don't care that it costs four. Right. Yeah, a little shield, pricey. The shield's but... big. Shield is, I mean, yeah, the shield allows you to trade up. Not even trade, just up. Yeah, and I like that it doesn't uh, slow your tempo. So, yeah. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, if it didn't have that, it would be... A little rougher. Way too slow. Yeah. yeah. Wing Leader's already annoyed me at times, so if this didn't have that attack action, this would probably annoy me just as much as a, yeah. as a Wing Leader. Especially for four. Yeah. Four, four and not a body. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, if I got way later or whatever, I still wouldn't have a 2-1 on the board. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's... It was good in Sherrod. It was good in Luke. I mean, yeah, right now... Nobody's really gonna... splashing blue. Like, nobody's bringing the blue base, yeah. so it's hard to be like, oh, it's also good in this. I mean, if you do run Sabine with blue, like, this could probably could be pretty decent, too. The two, like, it's, it's, a, it's a much more expensive heroic sacrifice. <laughs> you know, but the XP mm -hmm. tokens do stick around. You don't have to defeat your unit. And if you're just hitting, if you're hitting the base, the shield sticks around. They're gonna have to, tri you know, take two two things into it. Yeah, and you run some of the like the force package in in blue, and like you're bringing Yoda and Kanan. So I mean, it's not like you're having crazy amounts out for the shield, but still could be an all right. Same thing, like sneak that extra two damage in that your opponent might have not been expecting. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like right. it. It's cool. Any other thoughts? No. Flock, take the next one. Escort Skiff. A four-cost ground unit. Uh, green. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four underworld vehicle speeder. While you control another green unit, this unit gains ambush. Uh, 4-4. Four, four, four with ambush, but it's has to be green. Not super excited for this one. I mean, the ambush keyword's good, but again, if you don't have a, another green unit out on the board, it's kind of just a 4-4-4, four, 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 which kind of just makes it more of a, you know, draft card when it comes to that. So, not awful, but I don't like the 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 hold back on the ambush. Yeah, yeah I think it's it's probably like a I mean, it's it's going to be a good draft card because you're yeah. not going to have to prioritize picking it because it's yeah, really it's one of those things that's going to like filter through to you later um in the packs because it does have that requirement that you be running, you know, a fair bit of of green units uh to to get the bonus, but it is going to be like a a powerful card, I think in draft um if you do have that yeah base of green units to, to utilize it on because yeah that's a valuable stat line with ambush yeah ambush is uh arguably like the best keyword right now like ecl is considered like one of the best bases and that gives ambush off and so yeah i mean i think it could be really good but yeah needing a green unit can kind of be tough at times but in the four slot there's not a whole lot of stuff that you kind of that you like anyways so this definitely could make some decks by like default of uh i have nothing else to play <laughs> mm -hmm. that's fair but yeah outside of that stuff like yeah like you know like four costs you know you get the you get the dodana sympathizers who aren't great you got like the gunship, you got Bright Hope, you got Tarkin, Patrol Craft, like Kanan, Bays, like all those things are all kind of mid. Kanan may be my favorite out of everything I just named. Um, I mean, Bright Hope's amazing, but Bright Hope is serving in a different purpose. A different purpose, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's a different, uh, decent four slot because I'm they're just, just not green. There are a whole, whole lot of four drops. I'm just annoyed we've got another another vehicle that's a Nambo with uh, Wedge Antillas. Like, oh, Wedge gives it plus one and Ambush, but it gets Ambush because Wedge is green. Because Wedge is already out in green, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like all the snow speeders have Ambush, and you're like, but what is Wedge doing? That is funny, yeah. Bro, you're just trying to live out the dream for Home 1 to come in and have Ambush. I, I know. I just, you know, I just don't see it. Yeah. Double Ambush allows you to attack the base is what I heard. Oh, did you hear that from yourself? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, any other thoughts on the skiff? All right, Scott, you got the next one. It had to say this guy's name, Rook. Rook, yeah. Yeah, Rook. I was, yeah, for whatever reason, just because I know him most from the now Legends books, which is, is kind of funny because they do have, like, I, I wonder if it's a little uh, Easter egg. In his titling, so it is uh, Rook Thrawn's assassin. Uh, he is an a green villain unit, five cost, three drop, six health, shield. When this unit comes in, uh, when this unit deals combat damage to a non-leader unit while attacking, defeat that unit. Um, he has got ECL stable to him. He is the you know probably preeminent ECL unit at the moment because of that ability and the shielding and you can choose the order in which the shielding occurs so you can obviously like drop them in hit the unit kill it take the damage and then put the shield back on if the shield is going to be harder for your opponent to deal with rather than the yeah you know, the extra health yep yeah you don't want to walk into takedown but now if, the, if you do the mm -hmm. shield second now it takes in potentially two attacks instead of like just one six mm -hmm. uh all right our first gameplay session with this guy, Brian gave me <laughs> null games because he didn't deploy his leader because he kept thinking that Rook would just one-shot his leader. I was like, Brian, it's non-leader. He's like, oh. <laughs> He's like, this card's so broken. <laughs> that would be broken. That is probably why it specifically says non-leader. Non-leader, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. 
Yeah, I, he he like feels okay. The fact that he's stapled like ECL to feel really good, like similar like Zeb, makes him just kind of annoying because there's there's a lot of things you want to ECL anymore. There's a lot of things vying for that spot that wants to use it, and he's definitely I mean, a good option, but. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's like, a, a good option for it, but he's also just a good option anyway. Yeah. Like, a, a, a unit with, essentially, like, Death's Touch is great, because he doesn't have to, you know, bother hitting up to the health. He can just touch it. Boom, done. Yep. But only while attacking, so he is obviously very susceptible to being attacked and being traded into that way, because three attack on a five-cost unit is not the best. Yep. And that's how you have to deal with him. You have to, you know, proactively get him off the table rather than letting him pick who he's going to hit into. Yeah, you want to try to kill him the turn he comes down mm -hmm. type thing. So he doesn't get to... Especially if they don't ECL him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huge target. Huge. Huge. Brian, what do you think, uh, think of him now that you know it says non-leader? <laughs> thought it was really good then i still think he's pretty good i think shielded's a really cool trait i think shielded is a very good draw to having or to playing any card mm -hmm. um yeah i like that you can order it too uh, i think the ordering is a very unique like the order of operations in this game is still very interesting to me because there are a lot of nuances of what you can do and when so cool card very cool card ecl is king Yeah, it seems like you get penalized if you're just a green leader. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you just like, run mono. <laughs> we'll get to Palp in a bit, but I'm like, I want to run ECL, but I also don't like super want to be in mono. But but three ramp cards with him is actually kind of interesting too. Um, all right, any other thoughts on Rook? He's ugly. True. <laughs> True. I think he's supposed to be. I think he's handsome. I mean. The new Nagrai are better looking than the Legends Nagrai. Those things were creepy looking. Couldn't tell you what they look like. Do they look like the same eyes as Flock? Because then that would be creepy. <laughs> no, it, they have like, yeah, you know, big black eyes. Oh, okay. All right. Not, you know, All right. whatever's going on over there. On to the next one. This is me, right? Uh, yep. Gamorian Guards, they are a four-cost ground unit, just a single cunning aspect, and it is a 4-4 four, four underworld tag, and it says, while you control another cunning unit, this unit gains Sentinel. Uh, kind of like, so obviously a similar vein of uh, the Escort Skiff of bonus things happen when you have other cards in the same aspect out, um, and currently, again, there's just like nothing in the four spot, especially... I haven't looked at Yellow Hero in a while because I kind of just hate where Yellow Hero is at. But Villain, like Boba, you were kind of running um, Jabba in this, this slot. So, like, if you cut Jabba, this is, like, a pretty decent slot in because, you know, you're probably trying to play Boba Fett when you're at three resources, drop this guy at four, protect Boba. Um, and then also when Boba comes out as your leader as well, will be really good. Um, so I, I actually kind of like him, even though he's that single aspect, requires another aspect out. Um, but again, that's kind of due to not a lot of things at the four slot. And four is also a weird resource, especially in some of these decks. Like Boba, turn two, wants to ramp. So they're going from three up to five the next time they can play something. So like that four slot or the four drops have like a weird viability in that sometimes they're just straight up skipped and you don't want to play. Yeah. Yeah, you'd rather be it's a weird guard. Five. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather do so. I'd rather like overwhelming barrage if I had, you know, if I have something yeah. on the board too, or whatever the other five drops are in a Boba's deck. Play. Yeah, I feel like the, I feel like there's ways to get around it. Just you know, because if you can just use a an event, knock out the other yellow, then it doesn't have Sentinel anymore. So I don't really like that about it. Yeah, at least you can say with like the escort skiff that it gets its payoff and being able yeah, to Yeah, if you have the option, it. you yep. So it's like there's a lot of interaction your opponent can use to get rid of the sentinel to do whatever they want. Yeah. 
Again, another draft card that's going to be like a good thing that's just going to filter its way around to you because there's only going to be so many players on yellow and only so many players that are on yellow and with a sizable enough contingent to to want to pick something like this. So you'll get it later, later-ish in a pack and, you know, 4-4-4 four, four, four with Sentinel. Not the worst. Hey, you'll see, you'll see Mono, Mono Boba running this. You'll be like, dang, killing the Sentinel's kind of annoying. Yeah, well. yeah, mono, yeah, mono yellow. I can see it being good. Yeah. I, uh, this is it's better than the Esprit skiff because mono yellow is probably better than mono green. So you're you know, yeah, you have you have a a deck that this is going to be in as just a like its ability is almost going to always be on. Yeah, yeah, I'm like trying to think off the top of my head how many. Like Boba's got crafty smuggler, Boba Fett, cartel spacer, seventh fleet defender. All is like early yellow drops. Rito, maybe. Yeah, I've started to cut Rito in mine, I think. But mm. yeah, yeah, just trying to think of like, especially now with Palp. Yeah, you probably cut Greedo even more. <laughs> that guy's gonna get picked off with one health all the time. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, like, I I could actually see a slot where it just slides into some, some um standard builds. Due to lack of four drops and also just like they're running a decent amount of yellow anyways. Like it's probably what that's three, six, nine, twelve twelve drops that you would play before Gamorian guards that you know you could play. Like that's probably as many as you would have in a draft deck or I wonder what the odds are there, fifty to thirty and all that stuff in there. But I don't know. It still seems like a half decent play, but yeah, I mean it probably I guess doesn't fall into the actual fifty. Maybe against aggro, you could slot it in to try and slow him down, but there's probably better cards that do that anyways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Weird. All right, who's yeah. up next? Bry guy. Baze Malbus. He is a four-cost vigilance. I wish, wish we had Flock read this, actually, because that would have been... <laughs> Aze <laughs> Malbus. Karut, I'm we, and Baze Malbus. <laughs> Yo, I'm so glad. Dude, Aze Malbusy, uh, <laughs> Temple Guardian. Malbusy. Actually, I would have said male bus, probably. <laughs> the male bus. Does a male bussy? All right, so we got... <laughs> I was going to say, how do you say his name correctly now that I've said it? That's all. <laughs> Baze Malbus is a uh, unique ground unit cost for vi just vigilance. Uh, Temple Guardian, 2-5. He's fringe. He's got grit. And while you have the initiative, this unit gains Sentinel. So I think my first note... Uh, like, the first thing I noticed about this card is that he's just vigilance. Not heroism. Uh, so you can run him in either. I think that's super interesting. I love Grit. I think Grit's a cool keyword. I think it makes sense for Baze, like, thematically. Um, and then he's got a lot going on, right? Between the Grit and then taking initiative to, to, to get give him Sentinel. Uh, I think he's interesting. Uh, he is in that sick takedown range, though. So kind of feels bad if you plop him on there, expecting him to, to go the distance, and then he kind of... Fall short, but I mean, you can say that about a lot of cards. So, I think he's decent. I think he's interesting. Um, he has kind of fallen short with me when I play him, but I'm not that good. So, <laughs> could be. Who knows? Yeah, I think the interaction of like playing him and then taking the initiative is pretty neat, right? He gets it that second. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I get everything you're saying. Um, if they take down Baze, though, I feel like I'm kind of content. But that's all situational. Yeah, I feel uh, like I feel like Grit with Sentinel can be really good because like they you kind of basically kind of want to take them out and one hit with the five while taking two because if they take if you can only do like two to three damage to him, now he's sitting here swinging you four or five and that could be pretty good when he's got Sentinel. So when he's got Sentinel on it with Grit, I think it's a scary combo. But, yeah, as soon as you don't have Sentinel, I'm not really too worried about him, honestly. Um, yeah. I do think it is interesting that he is not a heroism unit. That's surprising to me. Yeah, I guess the... I know, people have said, like, oh, well, he's still on Jetta when they weren't, like, heroes or rebels yet. And I was like, that makes sense. But also they, like, made the decision to do that, like, anyways, to have the artwork be that and have him be non-heroism. Yeah, but he also, even when he was on Jeddah at that point... He's still, like, a good guy. Still a, yeah, he still wouldn't work with the Empire. Yeah. See, but I, I think it's interesting that uh, Chirrut's a rebel. But he... So that's what the, the artwork 
is separate then at that point because he's on Scarif at that point. He's on Scarif with his, yeah. Rules. Yeah. Yeah, but who's I mean, he shooting at in this picture? Stormtroopers. Probably the uh, uh, Saul, Gr- Saul Guerrero's guy. No, you're right. No, I haven't seen uh, Rogue One in a while. You're right. I don't think he shot at Saul's. That was just. Uh, he didn't. That was just casting. They took him virgin. afterwards. Oh, yeah. Well, he got taken. Well, I think just that whole group got taken. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. That I'd need to rewatch. I haven't actually. It's it chaotic. <laughs> yeah, a lot of chaos. That scene is chaotic. There's a lot of there's a lot going on there. I don't remember who because it was. So, Ch- Chirrut, I'm we comes in and like you know, beats up a bunch of the stormtroopers. Then a bunch of other stormtroopers come in. Bays shoots them over Chirrut, I'm we's shoulders, yeah. and then all of the partisans come in and hood them all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's fighting together because. So yeah, by that logic, he should be a rebel because he's we shot a rebel. shooting troopers. You're right. Hey. Anyway, talk to Tyler. <laughs> Not our Tyler, the Tyler we like. Oh. <laughs> he looks so sad. Look at him. Look at those eyes. Look See, he's I, crying I, I, right now. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're that crying. You look like the Snapchat Tyler. filter. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dude. Not having fun. <laughs> All right, any other thoughts on base? No. Goes in that crime attack. True. Uh, Flock, you're up. All right. Uh, Guardian of the... Is this Wills? You, Did just, I say it right? Is that what you think it is? Yeah, I think Wait, it's Wills. Wait, I said that earlier. Dang, that's why he knows. Oh, no. I, I Quit. Okay, so I was right. Guardian Quills. of the Willis? What you do with... Wills? <laughs> Guardian of the Wills. Uh, unit ground. Two cost. <laughs> uh, blue. Uh... A 2-2 two, two Force Fringe. So 2 drop with 2 attack, 2 defense. The first upgrade you play on this unit each round costs 1 less. Um, I am indifferent right now. I kind of want to mess around with this card. Uh, seems kind of iffy, but then I can... It, since it does have the Force ability, so you can get some good stuff with some of the lightsabers and stuff. Um, but, yeah, with the 2 drop, 2-2, two, two, it's either you're going to get it really high or... or going to get wiped off pretty early because what the one lightsaber is like a three one so you're only going up one health when you put it like the lightsaber on so luke, luke Luke's, invaders Luke's, are generally luke, cut so it's more so yeah you're playing jedi or the fallen which are both three threes yeah so yeah i don't know it's gonna be a, you're gonna, it's gonna have to be a deck they're gonna slot in they're using a lot of uh uh a lot of upgrades and i don't know if i want to build around a two two Per se, uh, just for the I, ability. I think you just enjoy the force trait and not try to force upgrades onto it. Like yeah. if you're running three Jedi, you're running three Jedi anyways. Mm-hmm. And this guy is just a turn one force user, so you can force throw uh, as early as you need to. I like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I see it as, just an enabler for your yeah. force. It's just abilities. It's just, it's just very like intriguing. Cause like, oh, I really want to. Ma- I really want to optimize that ability, but like it can definitely hurt you in the long run. Yeah, it it's weird too. If there was like a if there was like a really good four cost upgrade, I think the the stocks of this go up. But it's just like I feel like I can't even maximize that turn one into turn two, right? Because you could turn one play this turn two if you play like Jedi lightsaber, you're now just like floating a resource. So unless you have like uh, unless you do have force throw right that turn or yeah moment of peace or like something that you can spend that on, but also that's like three cards out of your hand real quick for a... I mean, I mean, honestly, though, for a 5-5 five, five that does minus two, minus two for the whole phase on things that attacks is, is pretty good. But yeah. If there was a good yeah. four drop where I could slap that on them turn two, that'd be really nice. Yep. Yeah, but you... Yeah. Four drop upgrade. It's a little rough in, in and of itself. I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing would go wrong there. Just never. I would never get waylaid. <laughs> Do we never even have waylaid. any four drops though? No. Nah. Yeah. I think so. The most we have is Jedi and Fallen at three, and then traitors if you count that. But obviously, I'm not going to put traitors. Yeah, there. it's yeah. Can I put traitors? The first upgrade? No, you play. Okay. <laughs> if it was the first upgrade played on this thing, it would be funny because then you could do go- yeah. traders for four. On traders for four. <laughs> but I mean, that that, who's going to trader us a two-two? 
hey man, you got a Jedi lightsaber on there or something. You got a Jedi uh, lightsaber on it, but yeah. I mean, I could, I guess, see this in like maybe like mono blue if you're running like protector, then that's you know a free plus one plus one and sentinel is not bad. So yeah. if you look at it to that way, but it is very like card inefficient. Yeah. But it is a good card for just turning on all of your force throws, force. I'm you know forces with me. Every other thing that triggers off that. Yeah, it binds all things, the lightsabers. And it's neutral, mm -hmm. so you can get it with, you know, Fallen Lightsaber works with it as well. Yeah. Yeah, Fallen Lightsaber's pretty pretty attractive. But again, yeah, it is that, like, odd thing where you just, like, already drop it on the next turn, and you're like, and I have a resource hanging out for no reason. Yes, I'm not actually able to take advantage of the discount because I just float that resource anyways. Yep. Yeah. Um, Agreed. All right, uh, Scott, you're up next. Remember, we're going to the gunship, and you're not doing. Okay, so we're going to the order of when they were released. Strafing gunship. It is a unit space four cost yellow, three attack for health. Uh, underworld vehicle fighter. This unit can attack units in the ground arena. While this unit is attacking a ground unit, the defender gets minus two, minus zero. Um, yeah, this definitely is a much more attractive four drop than all the other four drops that we have been talking about. The ability to strike out of arena is obviously very powerful. Um, even just like the stat line on this is pretty good for a four drop. Like it's not really paying anything for that ability compared to, to what we're usually expecting in space at that cost. And the fact that if you attack a ground unit, they get weaker on their reprisal is like just extra i'm kind of actually surprised that like i would have been completely fine with that text just ending at this unit can attack ground ground arena yep uh the other comparison is the also tuck gunship which is also a three four and that has ambush for four and it has another like it's heroism yeah so that like it is weird to me that the gunship got a another tax and needing another aspect symbol on it. Like is ambush that much better than being able to attack ground and give those things minus two for the attack. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to say. I mean, yeah, three attack ambush does take out a lot of like those early space units that can over the course of the game really like stack up a lot of damage, but um, yeah, being able to, you know, throw something into one arena that can affect the other, that's a big deal, and we don't have many things that can do, or anything that can do that. Many th many things that can do that. We have some, like, on-attack abilities and things like that that don't care. I hope they don't do that too often, though. Like, yeah. uh, keep keep the, uh, you Stay know... Stay in your lane, bud. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I like the uniqueness of, of, of the lanes that we have here. Um, and once in a while, it's fine. Like a couple cards each set is cool, um, but too much is is I don't think a good thing. Yeah, it seems like they're also they're kind of keep it thematic. Like the it's like it's the gunship that looks like in the art, it's showing that it's like going down shooting ground units. So I guess he is getting like some sort of either like tank or unit with like a rocket launcher that might be able to shoot space too. So hopefully they keep like the design. Those are some powerful rockets. Yeah. <laughs> My thought is like the it's Star Wars. Tanks. I mean, come on, it's unlimited. What we can do. Yeah, sometimes Thank artillery. Think yeah, the hellfire the tanks. tanks. The hellfire tanks. Yeah. Uh, they go to space though. Uh, they can hit like those gunships. The the they can, they can hit the, uh, they can hit things that are in atmosphere landing. Have we? Isn't every space ship so far though like in outer space? Except for this. Uh, yeah. And what about the snow speeders? Yeah, they're ground. Oh, those are ground. Really ground, ground right. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. Also, like, quick note on some interactions. Basically, if there's a space sentinel, you have to attack the space sentinel with this. Yeah. But if there's a ground sentinel, then uh, you can attack anything on the ground. Yeah. Sentinel restricts the units in that arena. Yeah. And this is not in that arena. Yep. Specifically. 
Yeah, so I mean, it definitely will be a nice way to get around some uh, some sentinels that are a little pesky on ground, where you want to like kill something immediately before it gets to attack or yep, do whatever. So yeah, yeah, and I think it's pretty attack, good. Three attack and take out some of those like supporting units that sometimes are hiding behind sentinels, or you know, wounded units that are hiding behind sentinels. Yeah. Jack, what's up with your? What's up with you? You, you leaned like, forward in the, the witness protection program or I something. Was just there thinking this. The my Logitech app on my computer like hasn't been working as well. So I and with the Brio, every time you turn your computer on, you have to redo the settings, and so I am unable to access it. The settings in the app because it's not opening to turn off the autofocus. So it just keeps autofocusing every time I move. Uh, okay. Don't move. All right. Anything yeah. else on the gunship? <laughs> <laughs> good gunship right. I like it back to me uh, other double aspect we have General Krell he's a 5 cost ground unit um, double aspect of uh, command so the last one for that he's a heartless tactician he's a 5 attack 4 health force Jedi Republic and he says each other friendly unit gains when defeated you may draw a card he says that each other, yeah, he literally... In his voice? Mm -hmm. Yes. Come on, Brian, you're the impressive while, guy. While sh down clones, he okay. says that. Um, so, Palpatine makes him interesting. I feel like he's still not, like, that good. He has three traits, which is good, but only one of them is relevant right now. Force, yeah. Jedi, and Republic are blank. Set three, we'll see what that, you know, comes into play. A lot of speculation of like token units coming and stuff like that too. So you know when those come into play, he gets better and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. um, for now, a five four that does nothing when he's played is kind of rough. Yep. Yeah, I just like oh, health. But you can ECL him in. You can ECL him. That's true. And then he dies. So you'll be running it, <laughs> and then he dies to most things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, he has the the cool synergies of of with pal. If you run mono green and like sack your own stuff, and now you get to draw a bunch of cards <laughs> with Palp's ability and the their when defeated trigger now. And then do nothing with it. And then lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised he doesn't have a fourth trade even. If he doesn't one have one for each arm? Yeah. Separatist tag. <laughs> What'd you say, Brian? Huge arm? Tag? One for e one I said one for each arm. <laughs> yeah, see arm. that would have been yeah. that would have been, you know. Huge arm been... guys is fourth trade, yeah. It's... <laughs> My buddy, uh, my buddy texted me or sent me a TikTok about like this guy making a fantasy draft of like a soccer team, but if it was all Star Wars players or like Star Wars characters on the team, and so I tried to be different from what that list said, so I made some weird choices. But my goalie was Pong Krell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hell yeah! My goalie would be Dex from the diner. Dude, no shot. That boy's not getting to any low <laughs> away shots. No, he's just blocking the whole goal. That's the whole. Big boy. My buddy picked uh he picked Bendu actually. And I said, That sounds good in theory until he's the one in the middle and he runs in the middle of the field and refuses to uh participate for either side. So I'd have an open net. But anyways. Makes sense. <laughs> any other thoughts on uh General Krell? I think he would be a fine goalkeeper. <laughs> that is the main yeah. takeaway. The best better, part better, would better be <laughs> Dude is a baller. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Who's uh, Brian? You're the next one. Rebel of Salt is a one cost rebel tactic event. Uh, command heroism attack with a rebel unit. It gets plus one plus zero for this attack. Then attack with another rebel unit. It gets plus one plus zero for this attack. Um, and I think when this card got shown on screen, I was like, I think I want to play Leia. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to play Leia. Looks just super good. I mean, this card is, can go with anything. Uh, it can help uh, tempo with any any um, hero deck, really. I mean, a lot of I mean the ones that are running rebels, obviously, but like can help Luke close some things too. Cause he's got a lot of rebels in there. Could go with Sabine if you're doing green. Sabine green, green beans. <laughs> uh, but obviously the first thought is Leia. Uh, just a really cool card. Um, and then if you use it with Leia, you get three people attacking. So that's pretty huge. Yep. 
Yeah, you could go Leia into into benthic two tubes and uh, mm -hmm. A wing. Yep. Smack for six, just the A wing. I mean, huge. I ironically, I think this is like, I think in a Leia deck, it almost might be too much. Redundant. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like not so much. I mean, it, it obviously you're getting your bonus and whatnot, but it's like how many. Other than when she's out as a unit, how many occasions are you going to have where it's like, all right, the Leia ability doesn't already accomplish that for you? Uh, be a nice little closer, though. Yeah, I mean, that, so that's where... would you pay like, one to do... Two, like, would you pay one attack... Like, another heroic sacrifice type card. Yeah. Pay one to get plus two attack. I mean, that's, you know, that's like the... But you have to have two units. Whereas, you know, the Heroic is, you know, all, all in one. But I think in a lot of other decks, um, being able to replicate that Alaya ability is is obviously, like, really powerful because you can... Your your reach to close a game when, you know, say they don't have a Sentinel out gets much bigger. You know, we're talking, like, two, being able to attack with two units, you can, you know, just tempo through them and, you know, deal six, seven, eight, nine, ten real quick. The yes. Heroic attack. This, uh... This made me want to play. It made Sorry. me want to play um, uh, Sabine Green a little bit more. I did the Sabine deck tech color pie stuff, or whatever, and Green seemed interesting because now you got like a a good Sentinel in each lane. You got the Echo Base and you got um, mm -hmm. um Green Bright Beans, Hope. and both those are are really good at protecting your A wings and protecting your other aggro units and stuff. And now this is like another good burn card because. You know, yellow, you get, like, Surprise Strike, and Surprise Strike is yeah. still better, right? It's one, you just need one unit, and that's plus three. Um, but, uh, yeah, this just made me more interested in green Sabine as well. Because you also get ECL with that, which is uh, really nice, you know? And it can be two It can be two Rebel units in different uh, <clears throat> arenas, so it's mm -hmm. not just consolidated to that. You can go, you know, A-Wing and little... What's it, what's it called? Galactic Marine or something like that? Battlefield Marine. Battlefield, yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah, I really like this card. I mean, I think it's I think it's really good. Um, that, yeah, like, Leia and Sabine are kind of where I look first, but like Brian said, it's kind of interesting to potentially do it in like a Luke deck as well. For, sometimes yeah, I mean, that he's... deck just is a little too slow for what it wants to do, and this could just help some of the middle rounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just by virtue of like what you have available to you, there are a lot of Rebels in that deck. Yes. Like, yeah. I think what Yoda and Obi-Wan are like the only two, you know, important drops that are not rebels. Yeah, I think literally everything else is. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Bright, you know, your space is all, right? Redemption. Your space is all rebels. I just checked the, yeah, the restored arc. And then obviously, like, Kanan, Luke himself, Luke as a leader, Luke as a unit. Yeah, and then, that, yeah, probably yeah. also be really good with Chirrut for kind of the same thing because he same is reason, yeah. Rebel. All right. Flock, you're up next. You ready? A lot yeah. of reading, dude. Oh, guys, a lot of reading. So the next one's an event. Seven cost. I had no choice. It's a yellow bad guys. Trick. So there's a good one for Jabba. Or not good one for Jabba, just a Jabba card. Uh, choose up to two non-leader units. An opponent chooses one of those units. Return that unit to its owner's hand and put the other on the bottom of the owner's deck. So, uh, my first thought to this was like, I kind of liked it, but then as I thought about it, the price of it, seven, that's a lot to basically bounce something back. And then the one thing I don't really, really like about it is generally, if you're going to pay seven you, and you're going to get rid of two units, you're going to want to get rid of like two expensive units. Really big boys, at least or at least one. And then a lot of them have, like, an on-play effect that you don't really want them to choose. So it could be useful, but then all of a sudden you can let them play the, you know, you let them choose. I don't really like cards that allows them to choose unless you can, like, force them into just picking a card you want. Or, yeah, picking a card you want. So it's really expensive. Not a fan of it. Yeah. Almost feels like it was priced around Jabba's ability. Yeah. I mean, it's also just placed around the fact that it's removing two units. Yeah. 
I mean, one of them, one of them essentially is basically getting defeated because it's going to the discard pile. The other one, yeah, your opponent's going to get to replay, but so bottom it's of like, the deck, not discard. Yeah, bottom of the deck. But yeah, I mean, essentially yeah. same thing. You're probably yeah. not seeing that unless you have yeah. a bunch of search in your deck. Yeah, so it's like the type of situation where you're essentially getting like a vanquish esque staple to a waylay. Yeah, I just, I hate choices, and yeah, I mean, I think your opponent's always going to pick the one that has, like, a an ability when it hits it, right? If you play it against, mm -hmm. like, a Vader, and even what they pulled, like, it's kind of nice to counter that in the sense that whatever they pulled goes back under the deck, but you'll get Vader coming out with yeah, Ambush again. That's, like, the worst thing to play this into. That's the worst thing to play any bounce into. I'm more so just, like, trying to think, like, what like what are these seven costs? Or even, like, if you yeah. pick Dooku in a smaller unit, then they could play Dooku and kill your small, mm -hmm. you know undefeated uh you know like avengers and a cost and stuff like that um you're bouncing luke right would feel bad <laughs> yeah uh, like i'm not gonna I pay mean, seven to get rid of like i mean i guess you can if it stores you in the game but you don't want to spend seven or even six to like uh play like a you know get rid of two you know stormtroopers or whatever you know it's like meh but well, uh, you know, towards the end of the game, you're fine with paying like whatever amount because really, like sometimes the limiting effect is the number of cards that you have. Yeah. Like you only have, you know, it doesn't matter if like Vanquish or whatever only costs costs less than this, but you just don't have enough options. Could yeah. be a decent closer, I guess. You know, they spend most of the resources. You get rid of two of their units, and then hopefully you can win that round. Well, that's like yeah, the play like. Yeah, if you can use your seven to counteract their seven, drop that play and yep. win that turn, that'll be good. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it probably countering like when defeated stuff is probably like it's prime real estate type thing, right? Even if you return Obi Wan to hand, you're still okay with that because yeah, you know he's not triggering his two experience tokens and stuff. Yeah, uh, you know I'm sure you could argue, oh, he comes down, he's Sentinel again, but still he's Sentinel either way, so might as well bounce him if you can type thing. I mean, it's definitely like it's. It's a it's a very heavy control card, so it's going to be in like a very heavy control deck because of the cost. So you have to you know really something that costs seven, you have to be playing multiple rounds up into that cost point for it to really you know for something like this that is reactive as opposed to proactive like some of the units that we're talking about, whereas the units can you know finish the game for you. This is only delaying the game for you yep. or you know allowing your other units to do things. So it's just going to be a heavy control option. For villain and yellow. I do love that this artwork ended up being a villain card because when people saw this, they originally thought it was Lando. Like he was going to be our blue hero. Oh, wow. Yeah. This, this was way back. Mm, that's uh, fair. But, but yeah, I don't know. It has a lot to be desired. Sometimes I feel like I'd rather just kind of play a little bit other removal stuff. But yeah, we'll see if it ends up having a slot. Searchable by Jabba, cost one less with Jabba. We'll see. All right, who's got the sky? You got the last or next one? Yeah, we'll sure. All right, so the uh, the Emperor's Legion. It is an event, two cost, green and villain, Imperial Supply. Return each unit in your discard pile that was defeated this phase to your hand. Um, this card is. Probably kind of suspect in in almost every case. Yep. Like it's just cost costing two for that effect is is pretty rough, and it really really is only gonna be something that you have any like actual control over or enough control over um, if you're running it with the the guy that we'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Has to be run with Palpatine, and also it's yeah, it's definitely like a late game card, right? Kind of like when he flips, if you can defeat two units and trade and defeat a unit, and get all three of those back. It feels weird to like early on, if you're at five resources to spend two for this type thing, just you know spend almost forty percent of your resources to return probably two cards. Yeah. Right, yeah, I I, I I can kind of see this also working pretty well, like you guys said, late game. But, like, potentially, hopefully, you're playing green, you might be getting close to, like, eight, nine, res or no, close to nine resources. You might be able to get something where you have a Vader on the Vader on, just kind of sacrifice to do as much damage as you can, pull Vader back, and then drop Vader again. So, 
Um, but definitely a late card game. Yeah, definitely some scenarios, but then also, you know. It, it also feels kind of almost like a could be a win more card in the sense that it's like, all right, well, if you have a big enough board that you can yeah. get enough things leaving the table in one round and, and have the room to play this and then next round play them again, it's like probably you're stopping the person. <laughs> yeah. Until yeah, we I mean, until... probably the best scenario is like the one flock just said is like bringing Vader because yeah. then you get another unit. So even if the board's mm -hmm. even, you could trade with Vader, play him again, kill another one, and mm -hmm. play another unit. But, but you yeah. could always just play another Vader anyway. Yeah, by that point, if you're at nine resources, you're probably like well into your deck as well. And with Palpatine, you probably drew a decent amount too. So you've probably like seen a good amount. So it's like even in that scenario, it's like I probably just want to run three other good cards that I could play at any time. But... It does have amazing art. That should be a play mat. Yes, that looks fantastic. Uh, and it's Imperial, by the way, too. So um, if you play Tarkin, you can find it with Tarkin. <laughs> Brian, your thoughts? I love the art. I, I have nothing to add. You guys said it all. I mean, I, I'm. I'll pipe up when we talk about the next card, though. Well, let's sure. get into the next card. Yeah. So let's Last, talk about that. But certainly not least, who we've all been waiting for officially, the last leader of set one. We have Emperor Palpatine. He is green villain. He's a galactic ruler. He has an action, pay one, exhaust him, defeat a friendly unit, and then deal one damage to a unit and draw a card. He is Force, Imperial, Sith, and an official. He comes out at eight resources. He's a 410, and he has, when deployed, take control of a damaged non-leader unit, and then has, on attack, you may defeat another friendly unit. If you do, deal one damage to a unit and draw a card. I think Palp is a late... Since I talked a lot on the last one, I'll kick it over to Brian, but I'll just say I think Palp is really good, arguably the best control leader in a vacuum, but whether or not he can hang in the meta could be a little different with aggro and stuff. But, Brian, I know you're excited for this guy. Yeah, I was a um, primarily a Palpatine player in, in the end of Destiny uh, before I picked what I was doing, knew what I was doing uh, with the game. Um, I still don't, but well, I got comfortable, Fair. let's say. So... Uh, I was looking forward to this leader the most when the uh, the Emperor's Royal Guard or whatever card came out and said is if when you control Palpatine as a unit or a leader, uh, I knew that this was probably going to be my jam. And looking at him now, I mean he's pretty cool. I think he's got a lot going on. Um, I think that coming out on eight is tough uh, because I was arguing that coming out on seven for Vader and Chewbacca were also rough. Uh, so eight. And a 410 with a stolen unit. It's cool. Um, but his leader ability kind of leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, as far as, I don't know whether you want to value sacking your own units for a card and one damage as opposed to board state. Right? So I think that that ability isn't something that you're going to be using all the time. Um, but it's it's uh it leaves you a little bit of room for other options too. So I I want to run him in mono and I think triple ramp is the way just to get him out, right? But then even when he comes out, he's only 4 damage. So like he's a mixed bag. I don't know how I feel about him yet. I'd like to play him. I'd like to f figure out how he feels, like what tempo you're uh, what tempo you're gonna run with him? Uh, I think he gets crushed by aggro, uh, for sure. He's he, you're gonna you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle the entire time. But um, I was I was saying to Jack earlier that I think this is one of those decks that I kind of want to have fun with. Like I would have this built, and uh, like this is a locals deck for me. I think I don't know if this is gonna be any kind of top tier, unbeatable tier zero deck but i, I like him i think he's I cool want any the deck art to be is currently my unbeatable huh i don't want any deck to be tier zero unbeatable that's fair the <laughs> art is my background on my monitors and have been for like whenever it, whenever it was released uh in that one article that they put out i don't remember what it was but um 
this is now my most desired showcase. Like, by far. Yeah. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be sick. Yeah, um, I mean, it's the same prompt. Right? All the artists got the same prompt, so it'll be him sitting in the chair. Mm -hmm. Probably, but yeah, curious to see how it looks. That's what I do. I love sitting in a chair. <laughs> He's just, I relate to him a lot, you know? He just relates. He's yeah. so relatable. Um, yeah. No? Scott, you good. Um, you know, I have to agree. I have to agree with a, like a lot of what Brian said. Uh, his like leader ability isn't enough to get you safely to his his uh, appearance on the table as a unit where um, he can flip a lot. Like you know, he has only four attack, but he is taking control of a damaged non-leader unit, and his ability on the other side allows you to force a damage onto something so long as you have a unit to like throw at it so you can take whatever from your opponent if you really need to but yeah burning through your units to to deal one damage is not necessarily like the most you're not going to trigger it all that you're not going to trigger it like constantly it's not going to be the most triggered leadership ability um obviously like yeah you're going to throw your super laser techs at your opponent and things like that so it really depends on how often one damage kills something. Kills your opponent's units. Like how often you can make that be like a pivotal amount. Because if it's just kind of like dinging them up and being inefficient, then I don't know. But I could definitely see you wanted to at least use it right before you deploy them. That way you can take control of whatever unit you want. So Yeah, but the only downside to that is Unless it's like what your opponent just played that turn, they're just gonna get they're gonna get a use out of it before you take it. Like obviously yeah. the most powerful play would be to have initiative going into eight and steal your opponent's readied unit. Yeah. Or even but, or even just take a sentinel kind of thing. Yeah. I mean yeah, that'd be a, awesome. Taking a sentinel is yeah. good. But you know. Deploying at eight is rough. Yep. Yeah. I, I like that they're going the fact with the, the, the play of the uh, when deployed keyword. So that's just a thing that they're already thinking of that, and that's going to be fun for future cards. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw that, because I was like, eight? Yeah, he's not going to get played um, often, but going to get played when we talked about earlier, when we get tokens. I think Palpatine's going to be freaking fantastic. So I'll sack a token, as long as you don't touch your normal units. You know, draw a card. Do a lot of stabilizing to get him out, and do a lot of damage. Cards do we have right now that have like additional on defeated effects? We have obviously the super laser technician. He's going to be throwing them at people constantly. Um, what do we also have? We've got the Vanguard Infantry with its when defeated. You may give an experience token to a unit. I also what feel like you don't it? want stuff like that though, where like nah. Brian's first list had that, but I was like, I don't know. You kind of want something that can like take a hit or hit something. Yeah. And then you trade it out after, whereas that's just like, just dies and does nothing. Just, probably. just <laughs> yeah, all, all your, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's fodder, and you're like, I get plus one. So it's one of those things where it's like, yes, it does in fact synergize, but is that a synergy that you really want? You get get Madi in there, dude. One defeated, ready a unit. Madi, Brian go. and I were talking about our list. He is interesting, like because you're already in yeah. green, so you're gonna you're definitely playing Vader. So, like, yep. ripping him out with Vader and then ping in. And it's interesting, but Madi's also just kind of like a terrible card. So... Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm just thinking interesting I... with the, the on death of, you know, effect. I keep thinking he's a 1 1 1 and he's a 2 1 1. And I'm like, that's. Yeah, if he was 1 1, that'd be nuts. Do season Shore Trooper and him. Like, but, yeah. If if you're pulling him, he's like the only one you're playing because you're not. You're probably not playing a lot of, if any, one drops with Palp, really. Uh,. But yeah, uh, hey, hey uh, Palp's ability synergizes with Tarkin Town, so red is certainly an interesting. Um, yeah, that that does help. I mean, he does have the ability. He definitely can force the damage onto something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think for me it's just like the biggest question will be, can he handle the the uh, <laughs> the aggro decks? Because I mean, I think he's like the best control, right? Like. Like, for example, yeah, like, Aiden's, like, a good control deck, but also, like, if it's a control mirror, her heals probably are irrelevant for most of the game anyways. Mm -hmm. Whereas Palp's 
ability to draw cards is going to be a lot more relevant than uh, than those simple heals, especially in those first few rounds. And yeah, I mean, obviously, like oh, you know, him deploying as a, a four ten, which is you know typically going to take two to three attacks to trade into, depending. I mean, two minimum two for pretty much everything. Um, two to three attacks to trade into, like, you know, he can leverage his stats pretty well. You get his, the on, you know, the when deploy, you take control of a damage unit, non-later unit right away. So in a control matchup, that's going to be, like, huge. But it's just a matter of, like, can he play into other things? Like, because even, like, even, like, mid-range, like, ramp stuff is just going to get to its power turns quicker. Yeah. And, like, it's just going to be tough, you know, for for Palpatine to, like... Yeah, he might be able to come in, you know, on turn eight, take take a, a you know unit Luke that's been out there, but that unit Luke probably has already at least swung once, if not twice. Yeah. I want to buff him up, but like I can't. I, there's no good route for that, but fallen, fallen lightsaber. Well, I don't think you. I don't think you care to buff him up. Like I know you like. Oh, no, I want only to. four attack is like, oh, that kind of sucks, but also. You don't really care how much damage. He, it's not like he's like Vader, where Vader's supposed to come in and just like eat up the board and do a lot of damage. Like I think Palp's pretty content. I mean, he does that force, right? So Fallen Lightsaber on him is definitely like a good play. I'm not saying like don't put upgrades on him type thing. It's always good on a leader, but I think you're content if he's just like doing slight damage, but his on attack is really messing with your opponent. I just think it's funny if you Voltron him. Well, that's anybody, yeah, any leader. You can Voltron any leader. Make him a seven thirteen. I think that's hilarious. This isn't Destiny Palpatine. Come on now. I, know, ten dice. I gotta. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta adjust my expectations. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, yeah, we'll still he's got, see. We he's still got four first. four traits, and two of them are relevant right now. Three of them. Two of them. Three of them. Yeah. Yeah, the Sith is the only one that's not. And we're also not talking about one of the best traits of him is that he uh, buffs Emperor's Royal Guard. And so now, yeah, he, you... he he turns them into both a sentinel and a, you know, three five. Ugh. Well, the yeah, the the sentinel you'll still need, like before he's deployed. Obviously, yeah, before he's deployed, you'll need like a like an Ozil yeah. or Madi yeah. or Ilarn, Pia. Yeah, you got some options, and they're all two drops too. So I mean, you could definitely play them turn one, play this turn two, and you now have a three five sentinel. So I mean, that's probably his best counter into aggro. This is the fact. <laughs> He that he has creates three, three, three five sentinels. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that that and honestly, like that is a very um, what is the word? Uh, cagey way to kind of like, all right, this guy's clearly going to have problems into aggro because he deploys at eight. What can we do to make him better into aggro while not making everything else that is not him that has access to those same cards better into aggro? And you have that very specific like. Here, you've got a unit that refers to him by name. Yeah. So it's so it's super narrow. Yep. Like that, that synergy doesn't matter with like the emperor as a unit because yeah, you know, it's whatever. Like at that point, it's already too yeah. You know, yeah, it's I an don't eight care. cost. Yeah. yeah, it's an eight cost. <laughs> and I I do like how he he kind of does like mirror uh the emperor unit in the way that they are like just bleeding through. Like the enemy units, just like constantly like figuring out ways to deal damage to them. Yep. But this guy also eats his own. Just need, you just need like a a stormtrooper like sergeant that just spawns little one one stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah. He uh. He, I think he still has some stuff. Like we've seen artwork for Force Lightning, so we don't know what that card would do. Mm -hmm. And if that's green or if that's red or, um, and then also the rumored board wipe is still coming. So we'll have to see what that is, how much that costs, stuff like that. So he still has some good control pieces that we haven't seen yet within the last 20 cards. Yeah. 20 cards. 20 cards. That's so insane. That there's still 20 cards left. That there's only 20 cards that there's left. only 20 cards left i think it's insane that there's still 20 cards left because it does feel like it's a set that there are like you know a lot of a lot of options and a lot of like interesting options to be explored and yeah we're still got like we're still waiting on 20 cards and that could be yeah. the diff that i mean you know 20 cards 
you could have an entire new archetype in 20 cards. I don't think you'll have an entire new archetype in, in these 20 cards, but you 20 cards, that's that, you know, makes an archetype easily. Yeah. And there's still like a few like cornerstones, like a, like like a board wipe, I would say, like yeah. would be a big addition. Force Lightning potentially could. We're still mm -hmm. missing Ghost and not that that necessarily would like spike higher into like you an just tier. have like a you know raging <laughs> thing for uh you know anything specter i mean yeah don't we all <laughs> no just no, you just you yeah, just brian you, are yeah. you there's no i literally as i said that looked at you you have the biggest obsession with specters i was like there's no shot this guy turns on me i mean I, I have the, i have the og ghost I, lego I'm set in my cool. basement but you know <laughs> the guest yeah, I'm, I'm a big rebels i i actually, I actually really like Trit from rebels i don't have you guys <laughs> sure yeah sure oh yeah he was great in rebels uh, no, I love but rebels. i was rebels more so great. saying that like could also just be like a good unit that helps out luke and Trit decks while also just no being, it's like, gonna make hera tier too. zero that's what you wanted to happen <laughs> i mean could, could i can it see be... right through you bud could okay. the ghost have texts like the Emperor's uh, Royal Guard, where it's like, oh, if you control Hera as a blah, 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 or blah, 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 it gains ambush. Could. I mean, if it's synergized with Spectres, too, it could be a Sabine mm -hmm. card. Do you think that the ghost would be a legendary? I haven't looked at any of the... Like, are there I... legendary slots left in Blue Hero? I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I know Lucas. is. But... So we is, have... Is the ghost going to be Blue Hero? Three... One, two, three for red hero. We have one. I don't know two, the rarities of any blue cards. hero. Yeah, that's my issue. Is I don't really. Or I'm sorry, not blue hero. Like, is there two in each like villain and hero colors, and then also the dual aspect one? So let's see. And then change of heart is just yellow. Change of heart is so just. I think yellow. that just throws everything out the window. <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna say we do need another blue, and we do need another red. Yeah, because we have three total blue right now. Yes, and Luke, three Avenger, and Vigilance. Red. Three red, black one, Mace, and Aggression. Four green. Yeah, four four yellow. It's kind of so, interesting that red's legendaries, two of them are literally not from the era. Black one and Mace Windu. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they're, they're legendary. Yeah. But, all right. Any other thoughts on, uh, on Palpatine? Any of these spoilers? We're a little over an hour, so we can uh, go ahead and wrap up. Uh no. No, yeah, I think uh, I think Palpatine's going to be a very sought after uh, special card. So Brian could could be you know crying dollar bills to acquire one. Bro, his if hyperspace it, variant uh, variant that'll I think that could be a pretty good one. Anyways, too that could hold you over. Um, yeah. I have you met Brian? Nothing holds him over. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I, uh, theme, don't, I don't I don't I don't know happiness. Nor do I know. Uh... Oh, yeah, March eighth, you will. <laughs> True. He's gonna know how in Feb tenth, dude. F yep. In a week. True. In, in a, a week, week, we'll be at <laughs> literal week. <laughs> it's dinner. Yeah, in a week, we'll we. Mm, we'll, mm. We'll I'm gonna make if you guys if you guys get fall down drunk on Friday, I'm gonna make you ride the roller coaster in the Mall of America Saturday morning hungover. Just get it all out. <laughs> this is it. Let's go. A mostly dry trip for me. I've decided that is. I don't believe you. you. He no. He says it all the time. Brian's and then like all I gotta do is postures. six o'clock, six or what five thirty in the airport in the morning. We're gonna be like, yo, shot. Brian's like, fine, let's go. No, 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 no. It, no he'll hold strong through the original part, right? We'll all be kind of tired. He'll be like, I just want to get on the flight, and then he'll have a three hour layover with you, and he'll be like, yo, you want to? I need a drink, dude. I would flock. Oh, I'm not even asking Flock to take what, a drink with me no, at that point. I'm just like, hey, just drink. Claire, like, hey, I need a drink. They get a layover? I have, I have a, yeah, I have a layover. layover. No, no, you guys don't. No, no we there. have a one-hour layover there and then a three-hour layover back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. All right. All right. Nice. Well, anyway. Yeah, I'll be, we, uh, we, okay, we get, I will be drinking on the way back. I like that. We get carry-ons and no layovers, but you get stuck with that? Not there. Not there. In a different state, I will be drinking. That's a lie. It's a lie. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, be sure to subscribe, follow, give a like, all those things, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. And uh, appreciate you tuning in. We'll have gameplay throughout the, the rest of the week, and then uh, we'll have some fun content for you when we get back from Minnesota. Appreciate it. And see you on the live stream next time.